Hey team, Tim here. Here are a couple of factors to consider if you are trying to answer the question, should I learn Rust? Especially if you are, say, a Python developer or maybe a TypeScript developer, and you are perfectly happy. <laughs> but you keep hearing about Rust. You keep thinking, oh, am I going to miss out in this thing? So uh, first of all, I need to don my cramp hat and say, I am not a neutral observer here. I teach Rust. I think that Rust is a fantastic language to add to your repertoire because it is it will improve the rest of your programming career and also I think just inherently is a, a very solid choice for developing software. I'll take off the hat actually so that you can kind of see my face um, maybe. Let's talk about some of these factors. Right. Are you encountering things like uh, bugs? <laughs> That's such a simple way to put it. Are you encountering things like a value error or type error in Python or maybe an attribute error or none error? Just kind of these kinds of things which at runtime really start to bug you. If you're in TypeScript or JavaScript, you might hear, you might see, oh, like undefined might pop up. Uh, this is a sort of a class of bug which are also known as null pointers uh, a null pointer exception or null reference exception if you are using java or, or c sharp undefined or null does not exist in rust it kind of can't happen because of the way that the rust compiler will check your code that means there and it doesn't do this at runtime there's no there's nothing running in parallel to your code to check that it's going okay in fact it uh, all happens at compile time so one of the problems with rush is that it will push you as the programmer it will like sort of push you aside and force you to consider some of uh, how your program is actually operating that type of consideration is actually very, very useful when you develop your other code. Uh, so that's the first thing. If you're encountering, or let's say, runtime errors that look a lot like very uh, sort of irritating things that you wish that the computer would kind of deal with itself, then Rust is a good thing to learn. If your users are unhappy with how slow things are, then a, a language like Rust is always going to be a very significant boost for your customers, for your users. Rust is ridiculously quick. Uh, you sort of can't write faster, like you can't write anything faster than Rust. Uh, even if you were to really optimize your handwritten assembler, you would probably get within say five or ten percent of what Rust could do without needing to learn, learn, learn any assembly language at all. Does your stuff cost too much to run? Is another really important characteristic or sort of another factor that you may wish to consider. If you are running in virtual computers, you need to provision, let's say, a 16 gigabyte instance, sorry, giga, yeah, gigabyte memory, RAM, that's what I'm talking about. Or, and you might encounter some sort of problem, and so, you know, what we'll do, we'll get a 32 gig instance. And then if that starts to become a problem, that's fine, because we can always just upgrade to a 64 bit, sorry, a 464 gigabyte instance. The problem is that these larger instance types are extremely expensive. And you suddenly move the viability of your little microservice from being something that's cheap to run at the side to something that really makes an appearance on the balance sheet. When people start to review what they should shut off or shut down. If you're, in, if you're interested in the sustainability of your services while you're in a cost sensitive mode in which most companies are these days right now in 2024, then a Rust is a very nice language to kind of add to the toolkit or add to the repertoire to be able to essentially say that we can keep the wheels turning for significantly less cost. 
programs written in Rust use less memory, they use less compute, and so can run on smaller instance types. Because they have fewer bugs, they don't require as much operational burden, and essentially your cost for DevOps goes down as you introduce Rust to the language. Oh, sorry, into the, into the stack. There is a big but, though. And the, like, the huge but is, is it enough? Unfortunately, that is something that you need to decide. Every new tool will add some slowdown for the first few weeks, maybe few months, while you integrate it into your tools. I don't have the answer about whether or not Rust is going to be perfect for your for your day. <laughs> but I do think that it's probably a very good option. And if you are on the fence, if you're trying to decide, is it is it something that's worth learning? I would begin to err to yes. Rust is looking like more and more like a language that's very hard to ignore. And so, yeah, that is all I'm going to say. Uh, except, ding, ding, I just remembered something else that I need to point out. If you see this uh, in the last week of March 2024, so it's the, essentially the week in which I upload it, I strongly welcome and invite you to watch me speak at Rust Nation UK. This is a, a global Rust conference that is centered in the United Kingdom. I'm going to be talking about unsafe, which is kind of a scary uh, thing to think about. If you are watching this in several weeks time or let's say a couple of years time, you should then look for the link in the description to the recording of the talk that I gave, let's say a couple of weeks or a couple of months or a couple of years ago. My name is Tim. I'm on the planet to build a better planet. I hope that you have a very successful journey uh, wherever, you know, building services and solutions with whichever tools make sense for you. And I hope that this video has given you some tips and some ideas about when Rust might be useful. Okay, take care. Goodbye. I just need to find where the button is now.